Hey guys, Christoph the Polish Geek here and I'm going to talk about Elden Ring because Elden Ring a year later is still as amazing as ever. It's still one of the best games I ever played and from software's best video game by far. I know now that lots of fans still think Bloodborne is the best from software game and I can totally see that. I highly respect that. I mean, it is unique. It has a very unique theme and and um, while, Dark, while Elden Ring is kind of medieval fantasy like Dark Souls, but it doesn't matter. For me personally, it's still Elden Ring is by far from software's best video game and one of the best video games of all time. And I'm going now to talk about it because a year later and the game is still as amazing and as impressive as ever. So... Let's talk some Elden Ring! In this game you can create your own character and you have various different classes to choose from. Like Vagabond, whom I played as, you can also have a bandit, a thief, a warrior, an astrologer, a samurai, a prophet or even a prisoner. I haven't placed mold of, I haven't played most of those classes. For some reason, I always like to play as a Vagabond. The art and visuals of this game look so great. I love how detailed everything looks and how wonderfully designed everything is. The graphics are so gorgeous. The lore and mythology of this game are so deep, rich and fantastic. You basically learn about what is going on by reading item descriptions and talking to some random characters that admittedly you don't often meet. And as I already said, George R. R. Martin was involved in making that game. And many elements of the lore feel very much like George R. R. Martin. Perfect example would be the actions of Moh, Lord of Blood. And yet, Elden Ring still very much feels like a From Software game. Yes, it very much feels like a From Software game. And if I wasn't told anything about George R. R. Martin being involved, it would totally be a pure From Software game. And Elden Ring is very much medieval fantasy, kind of like Dark Souls. But I also love how the game uses Lovecraftian elements of Bloodborne as well. The whole thing about Greater Will and Outer Gods is so interesting, fascinating and disturbing too. I hope we get to learn a lot more about it in the DLC and hopefully fight some of them too. And many of the characters you meet are so fascinating and interesting. Like the prime example would be Rani the Witch and how you go through carry a manor to reach her and do a side quest for her. It's all so very interesting and it has an influence on one of the potential endings of the game too. What I also love about the lore is that in like all the other From Software games, you are actually not directly told what's happening. You have to piece the lore together through, as I said, reading item descriptions, limited interaction with some other characters and by your open world and generally things you're doing. So like the boss battles are the prime example. Like you don't know much about them until you piece all the puzzles together through the lore. And I love that. I think it's this is wicked awesome. Like as I said, this is from software specialty and I just love it. This game has super fantastic open world. Every area is very unique and gives its own unique vibe. All those lands feel very living and atmospheric. We have Limegrave, the very world we start in, and the very world that promises we are in for an adventure of a lifetime. Look at those green hills, for example. Just walking through them is already so amazing and immersing. And it has a lots of fantastic enemies and field bosses, like this guy, Tree Sentinel. And then there's a second area, Lurnia of the Lakes. This uh, area is full of awesome water, marshes, and strongly gives me a feeling of Mazuria, Polish region. A region full of beautiful lakes and one of my favorite places ever. There is also Kaelid. Kaelid has been affected by Scarlet Rot, and that's why it is decaying and looks like that. It very much resembles dark lands like Mordor and Lord of the Rings. There's also the mountaintop of the giants, which has very Norse vibes. 
And in my first review, I said this area was my favorite, but I take it back. I think every region is fantastic and unique in its own way. And there are also underground areas. Those underground areas don't feel like just an underground. They feel like you almost entered a completely separate land. Like they feel almost as if you journeyed to the center of the earth and discovered a completely different land. That's what they feel like. The game is open world, but there are dungeons that you enter, and once you enter a dungeon, that's when you start feeling like you're playing a linear Dark Souls game. Dungeons give you very much a vibe of when how in Dark Souls you're stuck in an area and either you have to master it and process, or you're stuck. That said, you can teleport to the different area and improve your skills, something you could technically do in Dark Souls, but it would take extremely long time and wasn't worth it. But here, you can do it a lot. And as I already said, dungeons in this game are fantastic. Like, they are atmospheric and they are basically when you put all the skills you developed to test. All the dungeons in this game are amazing, but I'll give a shout out to my two favorite dungeons, and they are Volcano Man Manor and Miquela's Holly Tree. Like, I just love those dungeons. Look at Volcano Manor, for example. It's full of lava, and it's so dark, and you really feel like you're in a dangerous and dark place. And the boss battle is literally one of the best boss battles in From Software history, although we'll talk more about it in my best boss battles videos. And same with Miquela Halic Tree. Miquela's Halic Tree is probably, on the other hand, the most unique dungeon I ever seen in any From Software game. And the boss here is also wicked awesome. And it's also the most difficult boss in From Software history. We'll also talk more about it in my top 10 favorite boss battle videos. And as you examine the open world, you can discover a lot of many dungeons as well. There was mostly caves, mines, other things like that. And there are a lot of fun to play around and to, uh, and to find them, examine them. You can find various hidden items among them. Yeah, it's all so much fun to be finding them all and then examining and examining them all and see what's inside of them. A tiny downside, I guess, can be that the bosses in those mini dungeons can get repetitive because they've been reused in most of the mini dungeons. But hey, there are so many and many of those mini dungeons that honestly, it would be difficult to give a different boss for each one of them. They're still a lot of fun. Elden Ring continues to give super amazing designs to enemies you encounter. I always thought From Software enemies had literally greatest monster designs in video game history and Elden Ring ones absolutely do not disappoint. Let's just take a look at me fighting some of those amazing enemies. The boss battles are epic. In fact, as I said, I'm totally making a top 10 best 
boss battles video in Elden Ring, it totally deserves to be made. I will not directly talk about most bosses here because that's for the best boss video. Though, just know that Elden Ring has some of the best battles in gaming history. From Software in general creates the greatest boss battles ever. They are difficult but not unfair most of the time. And one of the bosses has literally the greatest design of any video game boss in history. The greatest physical design I mean. Like, I've never seen a more awesome looking boss than this guy, although you've seen a brief glimpse of him already when I was talking about the dungeons. Like, most of the bosses that you see here are actually not my favorites, because I'm saving those for the actual best boss video. As I already said, Elden Ring a year later is still one of the greatest video games I ever played and I really can't wait for the DLC and see what type of amazing things can the DLC of the game can have for us. Like, and I also hope that the next From Software game is more linear like Dark Souls and Bloodborne because I already said when you generally try to recreate something fantastic and big you already did it doesn't tend to work. So if they truly want to make another open world game, they will, I suggest, they work many years on it. As, and for their next game, as I said, it should just be another linear game, though with definitely a new theme, like Dark Souls and Elden Ring are medieval fantasy, so maybe their next game should have a new theme, kind of like Bloodborne was gothic horror while Sekiro was feudal Japan. So, yeah, their next game should be linear, but... It definitely should use a new theme, but as I said, Elden Ring is by far their best video game, one of the best video games of all time, and it truly is impressive. It's just an experience, and as I already said, I'm definitely doing a top 10 best Elden Ring bosses. Stay tuned for that video. So. Thank you guys for checking out this video, press the like button, please subscribe to this channel, and I'll talk to you soon in another video. Talk to you later, bye!